Hello, I'm Debbie Kay with the League of Women Voters of Portland, and you are watching Video Voters Guide. We are at Metro East Community Media to talk with candidates running for the 2016 general election in November. With me today is Kathleen Taylor, running for State Senate District 21. Kathleen, thanks for coming in. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about your district. Okay, so again, well, I'm Kathleen Taylor, and I'm currently the state representative for House District 41, and Senate District 21 is comprised of House District 41 and 42. So the geographic boundaries are as far south as Oak Grove, Milwaukee, then starts in southeast Portland on the, Mul so that's the Clackamas side, then on the Multnomah side, it goes all the way up to I-84, and on the east side of the boundary, it goes from 33rd all the way up to about 63rd, kind of depends on where you are. It's very, very, uh, moves a lot on the east side. And then of course the river, the Willamette on the west side is the boundary. Okay, so. and what, what goes on in your district? The, um, well, we are a largely democratic district, and so the, um, Folks, um, there's a little bit of a variation in that some of the things that happen in Oak Grove and in Milwaukee and in uh, Southeast Portland, there's a little bit of a variation there. But right now, I would say some of the main concerns on the Multnomah side have to do with everything from clean air, people being concerned about that and how toxins are being managed. I would say that's of particular importance. Um, also, people are very concerned about housing and concerned about the homeless. Um, down on the Milwaukee side and on the Clackamas side, there's um, concern that gentrification happens in a sustainable way. And there's a lot of changes happening down in Milwaukee and Oak Grove since they have the orange line, the TriMet line that's mm -hmm. coming down there. And uh, wanting to make certain that it um, isn't, that it may, keeps its own character, shall we say. So those are some of the things. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thinking about the state of Oregon as a whole and dumping, jumping into the big question, which is Measure 97, mm -hmm. if it does not pass, mm -hmm. how would you recommend that the predicted budget shortfall be addressed, especially education and social services? So I um, already have a bill, regardless of Measure 97 passes or not. Representative knows he shares the other half of this Senate district. Um, he and I uh, have a bill for the next session that we've been working on for quite some time now for e-cigarette taxes. And so the idea there is to um, disincentivize people from using e-cigarettes, but at the same time generating revenue for the state. Now that will generate, really depends, we're right now we're in the, we're in the middle of that, although the bill has already been filed, because I'm a sitting member of the House, so the bill's already been filed. Um, it could range from anywhere from 50 million, really up to 100 million, depending on how we do the rate. And so we will, the idea with that is to use the money for mental health services. Some of it would be used for um, tobacco prevention programs, but the rest of it, what we're, the leadership on both sides, in the House and the Senate, the conversation as of now is um, talking about using e-cigarette proceeds for uh, mental health services. I, um, my background is as a management auditor, and so I, I work in an area that not a lot of people pay attention to in the legislature, and that has to do with debt collection. And I have a bill, um, and unfortunately it was one of the three pills that died on Sine Die in the short session that we'll be reintroducing this time around. And I don't know that we have enough time today, but people can go and contact me in my legislative office and hear uh, more about that particular bill that we've already filed, but it's to increase debt collection for the state. So those are two things in particular. Um, we are I'm really encouraging all of my colleagues to file a some sort of revenue measure. So there's the capital gains loophole tax, there's some other things that we could be doing because we do need to have basically a plan B. I'm hopeful that 97 will pass and I hope it does pass, but in case it doesn't, I think it's a good idea to obviously have some backup plans, mm -hmm. so. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Moving to another hot topic, which is gun safety. What are your legislative priorities there? So generally when it comes to gun safety, we generally uh, work as a caucus. So on the House side, um, as you probably know, we did pass some legislation in the last two, in, in the last, uh, in previous sessions. And we're hoping in this session, we'll see if it happens, is uh, I'd like to see the close of the Charleston loophole mm -hmm. and some of the other, um, the, there's one called the boyfriend loophole. I don't know if you are familiar with that one. So that's another 
area that we would consider as well. Um, as you probably saw, the governor made an announcement about um, you know, the magazines and things like that that, pe that are filling the streets, shall we say. Um, and I would also be supportive of trying to figure out a way to get that out of common circulation. So I'm definitely a firm believer that um, we have a gun, lack of gun safety <laughs> going on here. And I feel very supported by my constituents on that. Um, on the th bills that I have voted on, um, I was very fortunate in my House district that I had overwhelming support. There are people who, of course, of course did oppose my vote on, um, on those bills. But I'm quite confident that the constituents of Senate District 21 will support me in my desire to increase gun safety. So. Okay, thank you. How do you think the legislature can ensure that there are adequate funds to address the real priorities of transportation infrastructure? Well, I think we need to have a gas tax is pretty much where I think that we're headed. The um, vehicle miles traveled is another issue that we're grappling with about how to go about taxing right. that. Um, there's different ways that that can occur. I am a firm believer that in the transportation package, although I, I will support it most likely, I've made it very clear to leadership on both sides that I will only support a transportation package that has um, includes multimodal options and has transit in it. And so, and um, mainly we will have some federal money coming in, there'll be some matching, there'll be some various things. We can have Connect Oregon to help pay for some of the multimodal. But the reality is, is that we need to have a gas tax in order to, to pay for the package. Okay. Um, what, if anything, should the state of Oregon do to reduce carbon dioxide emissions? and increase local and state production and use of alternative energy options. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> I believe climate change is the issue of our time. I think it is the most important issue that um, not just faces Oregon, but faces the whole country and the world. I am a firm believer and firm supporter in uh, Cap and Invest, and I'm hoping that we can make some progress with that in this legislative session. It will be a challenge. Um, but I will be working on that with Senator Edwards, assuming that if I'm fortunate enough to win the Senate, then I will be um, doing that with Senator Edwards. Um, the, um, in addition, the diesel, we have a diesel bill that's going to be going forward. There's been a diesel work group, and the idea behind that is try to get diesel trucks out of circulation and not going up and down the I-5 corridor. And so we're working on how that will be funded. And one of the possibilities is using the money from the VW settlement that perhaps you've heard of and uh, to help pay for that. That's not enough money to retrofit or replace all the diesel trucks. So there'll have to be some sort of prioritize, we'll have to prioritize which vehicles, right. which trucks would um, qualify for that. But um, yeah, we need to also just invest in the transportation package alternative non-fossil fuel dependent transportation options so thank you and of course we, renewable energy right so. <laughs> and we are actually out of time okay thank you for watching this has been the video voters guide the general election is november 8th and the last day to register to vote is october 18th be informed learn about the candidates and the ballot measures and exercise your vote your right to vote, it really, really matters. Thank you for coming today, and thank you for coming today, Kathleen. It's great talking with you.